What, what are you doing? Oh, well, the toilet was clogged, so I thought I would fix it for you. It's, it's a weird looking plunger. It's, I found it, though. Uh, no, that's a plunger for the game today. You, that's a, the kids are going to play a game with that plunger. They're going to put it on their heads. Do you want me to clean it off? I, 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 can, I can do that. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Clean it up. Don't say anything to anybody, though. I won't. Hi, everyone. Welcome to LifePoint Kids. We're so excited that you've joined us today. If this is your first time with us, or if you've been with us a zillion times before, we're glad you're here. Summer is coming, and that means VBS will be here soon. And it's going to be a really, really cool vacation Bible school. Check out this clip. This VBS is designed for the whole family, so everyone can get involved. Grandparents, if you want to, you can do this with your grandkids too. This VBS isn't just for people who live for locally either. If you've been watching Life Front Kids from a distant city or even from another state, you can sign up to participate too. Vacation Bible School is scheduled for June 8th through the 12th. For all the details, Go to our Waze website or to our Facebook page and click on the link. Game on! It's game time! Mark, Savannah, Clayton, and Emma are going to play the plungers game. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Ooh, those plungers are dirty. They've been used. Well, I promise you they've only been used once. Okay, only been used once. All right, well today Mark and Clayton are going to play for their virtual contestant and he is, or she is, it's a he, it's Emmett, Emerald Dalton. You're playing for Emerald Dalton. All right, and uh, Savannah and Emma, you are going to be playing for the virtual contestant of Everett Dalton. Oh, we've got the Dalton brothers. All right, so um, if y'all are ready, now remember, if you're watching us right now, Let's make sure you let us know that you are so we can put your name in the bucket. You can contact us by Facebook or by email or you can call and leave a message. But let us know so we can put your name in the bucket too so you can possibly be a virtual contestant. Well, earlier we showed the teams how the game is played, but here are a few reminders. Okay, y'all ready? Okay, remember the object is to wrap the ball around the stick. All right, around the plunger handle. Keep the plunger on your head. One hand behind your back, and the best two rounds out of three wins. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Are you Are you all ready? Yes. All right. On your mark. Get set. Go. We have a winner! All right, boys, you're the first winner. You wrapped it all the way around. All right, so you're going to unwind it, unwrap it. All right, stand back in place, put your plunger on your head. Are you ready? Okay, this is your chance. Don't make the boys look bad. Good, okay, make them look bad. Make them cry, okay? Are you ready? On your mark, get set, go! Nice try, girls. Um, uh, our virtual winner is is Emerald Dalton. Emerald will be sending you a Walmart gift card, a five dollar Walmart gift card in the mail. All right. So congratulations, congratulations to all of y'all. Did a really good job. Well, we've got an exciting service today. So let's get started. It's time to open up in prayer, and then the uh, the kids are going to lead you in an opening song.
All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can come together via the internet to worship you, Lord God. And we just pray that for this time that we spend together, we pray that we open our ears, that we open our spirits, and that we just listen to the message that you want us to hear. And we just thank you for always loving us and for your grace and mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. never heard. It's the story of Korah and the complainers. So just sit back and relax as you watch this week's lesson introduction of I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. I know it sounds crazy, but if you drop milk and strawberries from the top of a building, you will not get a strawberry milkshake. I know that sounds crazy, but with the help of gravity, you can make a fruit salad. I know it sounds crazy, but the inside of a toaster looks like this. I know it sounds crazy, but grandmothers cannot fly. Don't even think about it, shut up, boy. Ow! Ow! That hurt really bad. I bet you're wondering, why are we talking about stuff falling from the sky? Well, weird stuff falls from the sky all the time. Even in the Bible, weird stuff falls from the sky. And today, we're going to tell you all about it. Today on... I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Hey there, boys and girls. It's me, Noah. Do you have this anyone that you know that makes you just crazy because they complain about everything? My chainsaw's too loud. I can't find my turkey. I hate the color blue. Isn't that annoying? Nobody enjoys being around a complainer. Complaining comes from a bad attitude. Complaining never helps anybody. 
Jesus loves me, this I know. Hey, 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 hey. Let's sing it, more talky. Okay? Boys and girls, have you ever heard of anyone who complained even against their pastors? They say things like, he didn't even take my hand. He sings songs I don't even like. Man, he preaches way too long. All these things may be true, but they come from a complaining spirit and a bad attitude. Today, we're gonna look at another amazing Bible story that you've probably never heard. It's found in Numbers chapter 16. Yes, I said Numbers chapter 16. And whenever you hear this story, you're gonna say, oh, it sounds crazy. And I'm gonna say, yes, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Very, very true. And it teaches us about the dangers of complaining. No more complaining. Hallelujah, no complaining. Woo! <laughs> okay, okay, enough silliness. We'll see you next time on I Know It Sounds Crazy, but it's true. Uh, true. What's a hand got to do to get an echo in here? <laughs> All right, it's time for praise and worship. Everybody stand to your feet and let's give God some praise.
What's up? What's up? What's up? What's, What's up? up? Oh yeah, oh yeah. What's up, everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T L E F. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how we gotta get complaining out of our lives. No complaining. So anytime today that somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I will keep a good attitude and not complain. Yeah, baby, we gotta cut the complaining out. Man, I just wanna, I don't even wanna be here. This is a crazy place. I don't even like this place. This is really no good. God wants us to do everything without complaining or arguing. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I will keep a good attitude and not complain. And that's what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out, baby. Yeah. So let's practice our what's up a couple of times. Okay, you guys ready? Come on, game face. Okay, ready? What's up? Okay, all right, come on guys. You can do a little better than that, okay? All right, all right, you ready? Here we go. One more time, all right? One, two, three, what's up? Ah, much better, all right, all right. And that is today's what's up, okay? So you guys be ready for that, all right? What's up? Numbers chapter 16, we find one of the wildest stories ever. Moses was the leader God had appointed over his people, the Israelites. Moses led them out of slavery in Egypt, parted the Red Sea, and they were headed to the land that God had promised them. The Israelites had been following Moses for many years through the desert on the way to the promised land. The whole way, they had been complaining and whining. They complained about anything and everything. One day, a man named Korah decided he was going to rise up against Moses as the leader. He started complaining against Moses to all the Israelites. Korah had a terrible attitude towards Moses. Korah got 250 leaders in the community to take his side. Then he went to Moses to complain against him. He said, we are all just as holy as you are. What makes you think you need to be leader? Moses didn't get mad. He told Korah, it is the Lord that you and your men are rebelling against. Come back tomorrow. We will both call on God. The one God answers is the one who is really supposed to be the leader of the Israelites. The next day, Moses and Aaron stood before Korah and his 250 men. They both lit their incense torches and called on God. All the while, Korah and his men continued to gripe and complain about Moses. All of a sudden, the ground opened up and swallowed Korah and four of his friends. They were never seen nor heard from again. And then God sent fire from heaven and burned up the rest of the 250 men who had come with Korah to complain. How many of you would agree that this is obviously a pretty dumb idea for Korah and his friends to start a complaining fest against Moses? You're right, but do you want to know an even dumber idea? The next day, another group shows up and starts complaining against Moses. You would think they would have learned a lesson from what happened to Korah. They didn't. Moses and Aaron prayed to God not to kill these people for their wicked attitudes. God had already sent a plague to destroy them, but because of Moses and Aaron's prayers, not everyone was punished. What an amazing Bible story! Today we are going to learn a valuable lesson about how we too must be careful not to fall into the trap of complaining. What's up? Well, it's me, Guinea, the record keeper. <laughs> Do you want to know one of the world records? <laughs> well, it's the longest hot dog. <laughs> you know how long it was? <laughs> I do. It was 137 feet. <laughs> well, enough of that. It's time to say the power verse. Today's power verse says, 
in everything you do. Stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14. What an awesome power verse. Now I need some help. Boys, stand up. I want you to say the power verse with me, Guinea. On three. One, two, three. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14 Great job, boys. Now you can have a seat. Girls, stand up. It's your turn to say the power verse with me, Guinea. One, two, three. <laughs> In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14 Great job, you can have a seat. Boys and girls, did you know that we're supposed to stay away from complaining and arguing with everything, not just our brothers and sisters and friends? That's what the Power Verse says. Now that you know that, I want everyone to stand up and say the Power Verse with me, Guinea, on three. One, two, three. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14 What a great job you did today, everyone. Have a seat. Well, I've got some more record keeping to do, so ta-ta. Keep your eyes crossed and your noses clean. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey, hey, what's up? Today we're looking at another crazy story from the Bible. We heard about how Korah and his friends did something totally dumb by complaining against Moses. They suffered a terrible fate. But it was even dumber for the next group of complainers to do the same thing. They should have learned from the lesson from Korah to not be a whiner and a complainer. A lot of people have a bad habit of complaining. It's even worse when they complain about things in the church. They don't like the way the pastor preaches, so they complain. They don't like the songs that are being sung, so they complain. They don't like the color of the carpet, so they complain. They're constantly going around to others and complaining about all the things that they don't like. That's not the way God wants it to be. Instead, we need to talk to God about your complaints, not others. Maybe there are really some things that you're upset about. Rather than going to other people and complaining, talk to God about those things in prayer. Maybe he'll give you ideas on how to fix it. Better yet, he may show you how you may be wrong about the situation altogether and change your attitude about it. That would certainly be better than complaining and getting a bunch of other people involved in your complaints. You want to know one of the best ways not to become a complainer? Don't hang around other complainers. You tend to become like those people that you hang around. The 250 people who hung around Cora all became just like Cora. They became complainers. If you choose to hang around people who are doing wrong, you tend to start doing wrong yourself. Let me explain it this way. See this sponge? They say this sponge is you. And this picture of Kool-Aid represents your friends. If you hang around people who are complainers and whiners and stuff like that, guess what you're going to hear all the time? Well, that's right. You're going to hear complaining and whining. When you're around others, you tend, to soak up, you tend to soak up what they are. Then guess what happens? All the complaining that you've been hearing and all the whining you've been listening to ends up coming out of your mouth too. When you hang around complainers, you become just like the complainers. You become a complainer yourself. When you hang around whiners and grumblers, you become a whiner and a grumbler. When you, whatever you soak up is what comes out of your life as well. Don't be dumb or dumber. Ask for forgiveness. Instead of being dumb like Cora and complaining all the time, or being dumber like the others who complained despite what happened to Cora, choose to stop complaining. Choose to leave the complaining behind. Ask God to forgive you and never look back. God wants us to use our mouths to bless him and to bless others, not to complain. Let's choose to do just that. 
Why don't you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Lord, we first want to thank you for the awesome Savior that you are, for being such an amazing God. Lord, we want to ask for forgiveness for what we've done as far as complaining in the past. Lord, we ask that you help us to choose friends and people to hang around that aren't complainers and whiners so that we don't become like that. Lord, we ask you to help us not to whine and complain, but to come to you with any problems or complaints we have. We ask this in Jesus' name because we love you and give you the praise. Amen. Now, if you've never accepted Jesus in your heart, today would be a great day to do it. All you have to do is pray to him and tell him that you accept him as your Savior, that you believe he died on the cross for your sins, and ask him to forgive you for those sins. You can go to your mom or dad, you can go to a grandparent, you can go to an older brother or sister, and they will be happy to talk with you and walk you through the steps of accepting Jesus in your heart. I give you my word and I promise you that you will be, it will be the best decision you ever make. What's up? see how much you can remember from today's lesson. Question number one. What was the name of the guy who was leading complaining against Moses? That's right, Korah. Question number two. Korah told Moses what? That's right. We are just as holy as you. Question number three. What did Moses tell Korah and his friends to do? to meet him in the morning. Good job. Question number four. What happened to Korah and his friends? The earth swallowed them. Question number five. After Korah and his friends died, did everyone else learn their lesson and stop complaining? No, they did not. Question number six. What did Moses and Aaron do when God sent the plague? They began to pray. Good job. Question number seven, as Christians, should we be people who constantly complain? No, that's right. Question number eight, which of the following did Noah Lotz not throw off the building? That's right, Grandma, thank God for that. Number nine, what's up today? Good job, I will keep a good attitude and not complain. And lastly, question number 10, where was today's power verse found? That's right, Philippians 2.14. Great job, boys and girls. You are all really listening good today. What's up? Hey, guys. We are so glad that you chose to join us today. Parents and kids, we really do miss you all very much, and we are praying for you every day and can't wait to see you. We're going to go ahead and close up the service in a word of prayer. So kids, remember, we close our eyes so we can focus on the prayer, and we bow our head out of reverence. So if you would, close your eyes and bow your head. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity to gather. We thank you for the technology and resources that you've blessed us with, um, the opportunities that this also presents. Holy Spirit, we pray for your strength so that we can take today's word and we can carry that to our family and to our friends around us. And also, we pray for a thankful heart. Help us to not complain, but know how blessed we truly are in every situation. Help us refer and defer to you alone. In Jesus' holy name. And everybody said, Amen. All right, guys, you have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday.